Okay, so now that we have a couple sequences that we can use to edit together, uh, we can go ahead and go into the master uh, sequence asset to do that. Now before we do that, I just want to quickly show you, I went ahead and did a, um, a quick third shot here. And it's just a simple uh, having the actor go from his walk cycle into a run at the camera. And the reason I did that is I wanted to show you the um, the curves editor. So if we go down to the, the mannequin here, and I'm going to quickly look at his transform and click the animation key curve editor, we can see the curves of all of the uh, keyframes for his transformations. Now since these are all linear because um, there is no change on anything other than the y-axis. We can go ahead and just focus the y-axis by clicking on it down here. And you can see um, you can see here he goes from his walk and then he starts his run. So if you're used to an animating program like Maya, this will be quite familiar to you. You can click a, uh, a keyframe and you can adjust your curves to have uh, you know your timing changed. You can go to your your editor here and you can do your pre and post affinity you can even bake animations uh, if you take a keyframe you can change a value of its current uh, keyframe by sliding it up and down or you can change the time by sliding it left to right the reason I'm showing you this is because currently as our character runs you can see there's a slow in and a slow out here and since our character uh, is going to be going from this cut into another one. We don't want him to slow down running. Uh, he's going to be running into the next cut, so I'm just going to grab these two and I'm going to hit linear interpolation so that it goes at a constant rate. And then I'm going to go ahead and save my shot three and I'm going to open up my master. So to begin editing in your master sequence. The first thing you need to do is click the add button and select this add shot track. Now a shot track differs from a camera track in that it imports uh, fully uh, completed sequences already. So you can see when we hit the plus shot button here it gives us access to every sequence we have in this project. So if we go ahead and select shot one we can see shot one uh, open up here. If we hit the lock camera button here, it'll even lock uh, our viewport to uh, what the camera was seeing during that shot one. So the problem with this is our shot one sequence is 150 frames long, even though we only animated the first 30 frames. By default, when you create a sequence asset, it is 150 frames long. So there's two ways that we could uh, get this sequence to the 30 frames, which is all we're going to be using. The first would be to double click on the shot one and it open up the shot one asset. We can then slide over and grab this, uh, this slider bar here, which the red bar signifies the end of the sequence and we could drag this over to uh, 30 frames and then our sequence would have a dead stop at 30 frames. Uh, this works if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is the shot you want to use. You're not going to change anything and uh, you wouldn't have to worry about blowing away any of your project behind that bar. If, for example, you're not entirely sure that we're not going to go out and extend this from 30 frames to 60, uh, there's another way that we can deal with this problem. So if we go back into our master, we can scrub over to 30 frames and right click shot one, go to edit, and then select trim right. This is going to cut any frames after 30 and keep our shot one project intact and only call upon the first 30 frames that we uh, had in the time slider. To add a second shot we're going to click the shot button again and click shot two. A quick word about organization. 
uh, for a short sequence with only maybe two or three shots, having everything line up isn't too, too bad. You would have a, uh, a hard time finding all your shots, however, if you have upwards of 10, let's say, in one sequence. So in order to keep things easy to see where shots begin and end and lead into each other, when you import a shot, drag it down and have them leapfrog. So now we can clearly see where shot 1 ends, shot 2 begins, and when we import shot 3, we will have it on this top bar and we will be able to see where 2 stops and 3 begins. Let's lock the viewport to our camera so we can see what's going on in our shot. If you recall, shot 2 was animated out only to 80 frames, so we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to right click at 80 frames and we're going to go trim right. So now we have a shot that goes from our shot 1 to our shot 2 and will eventually go into shot 3. So let's add the shot 3 now. Now shot the has a uh, a weird animation here and I've decided that I want to cut that. So I'm going to scrub past that little hiccup and I'm going to right click, edit, whoops, trim left, not right, so that my animation now begins several frames into the sequence. And now, when we lock this to our camera and press play, it'll go from the character walking to the character running, and we cut out that little awkward uh, hiccup there. One of the neatest features of uh, Sequence is the ability to go back and do a variation of a, of a shot called a take. So let's take shot one for example. Maybe we want this camera to be a little more dramatic. Maybe we want to go from a uh, out of focus camera and come into focus as it zooms in on the character. So let's right click this sequence. We're going to go and select a new take and it's going to open up this uh, save as box. Now this is the function that only works if you have your shot ending in a number. We're just going to accept the default uh, naming convention here. And you can see that this shot has changed to take two. And you can switch between takes simply by right clicking, going to takes, and selecting them between the two. So let's edit take three. Here's take three as it exists. Let's go down to our camera manual focus distance. We're going to edit this first keyframe by just making it fairly blurry. Now when the video plays it's going to go from out of focus, zoom in on the character as he comes into focus. We're going to save these head back to the master and lock this camera to our viewport and see how this looks. So now at any time we can go back <coughs> right click on the take select take two and you'll see that it, we have our original in focus one here. I think I like take three better though so we're gonna go with that. Once we have a completed sequence, we can either just save this out and have a blueprint call on it in the level to play this exact sequence, or we can click this render button and render this out somewhere as we see it here. 
So now that you know the basics of camera movement, the camera types, and how to set up a shot and edit them, you have the basics of everything you need to know to start creating cinematics for yourself. I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the other tools that are available to you in some other videos, but as of right now, you should be able to jump in and start making some cinematics.